It's another Wednesday, so it's time for another weekend reading. Oh, it's kind of snowing as I film this. Oh, all right, let's just get to it, shall we? I'm off work, and I just want to get this done. What did we have last week, if you might remember? We had Wonder Woman Volume 1, Afterworlds, which was a decent read. We had The Old Guard, Tales Through Time, which might just be in a miniseries, or it might be a volume in its of, of itself. I'm not sure. But it was okay, too. And then we had Reign of X, Volume 7, continuing all the X-Men shit, which was pretty good. But <coughs> I think more of it will make sense once I reach X of Swords, which shall be coming soon. Um, as for what was my favorite, it was Wonder Woman, Volume 1, Afterworlds, which is a surprise even me. Usually Wonder Woman is not my favorite, but I gotta say this time, I like this. This was a good read. It was, a. Uh, a decent story that would probably make more sense if I had read uh, Death Metal, the miniseries that this directly spins off of, but I'm guessing at the end of Death Metal, Wonder Woman dies. I, I, I guess. Way to spoil that one, but it also means that she's coming back real soon, so it's not even that big of a deal, honestly. Um... But it, basically this ends up with her dying and then going into the wrong afterlife. She ends up in Asgard where she meets some key figures like from uh, you know Norse mythology and Germanic folklore like Siegfried and uh, Ratatosk the squirrel and she even runs into Thor and they have conflict with the Valkyries. Uh, she then goes to other afterlife. She uh, apparently she's being guided by the, the character Dead Man and uh, she ends up, uh, <coughs> pardon me, she ends up heading to Olympus where she finds all the gods are dead. She has to go on a quest to bring them back to life, which is pretty impressive. And then she discovers that one of the gods, or at least half of one of the gods, Yanis, is behind all of this. And Yanis has taken her form for some reason and is carrying a weapon that can, allows her to kill gods. And... She has to travel through different uh, realities, like she travels to the Phantom Zone, the Earth Eleven, uh, the Fifth Dimension, uh, the land of the fairy, the land of fairies, uh, or the land of the Fae, and she eventually uh, travels to a place of in between life and death, where she uh, battles Yenis, and you know they kind of. They end up solving the problem. This ever all has to do something with an old villain of hers called Dr. Psycho. Like, he was behind a lot of the whole thing, so... It's complicated. Or, maybe, no, that was just earlier on, but he was working with... Yeah, it's complicated. But it's a good story. I'm explaining it terribly. <coughs> Pardon me. But, yeah. Wonder Woman Afterworlds. Good read. It's a good, like, odyssey journey for Wonder Woman. Plays much more in her mythological side of her story, which I really liked. So, it was good. That was last week. Sorry, it wasn't anything too exciting. Nothing I was super in love with. It was just that was my favorite read of the week out of the three. Uh, let's see what we got next week. Next weekend. We have uh, Champions Volume 2 Killer App. Um, can the champions wage war on a trend? The champions tried fighting fair. Now it's time to fight dirty. The sinister corporation Roxxon is cheating the system to try to keep Kamala's law in the books. So the champions' only option is to infiltrate the company and take it down from the inside. Who will become Roxxon's newest interns? Or who will become Roxxon's newest interns? Meanwhile, Roxxon's wildly popular app continues turning public perception against teen superheroes. In order to earn the trust of their cutthroat supervisors, the undercover champions will have to deliver the company an unwilling spokesperson, Kamala Khan herself. What will it take for Miss Marvel to agree to become the face of a company and a law that she hates? 
And how dirty will the team's hands get before all this is over? Uh, collecting champions, 6 through 10. So, uh, yeah. Champions has been interesting as of late, so we'll see what happens next. Next up, we got Green Lantern Volume 1 Invictus. Now, this is confusing because we just had a Green Lantern series, but they're two very much Green Lantern series. I think this is more like the Green Lantern Core type series, even though it has the same name. Uh, let's see. The central power battery, the force that powers all Green Lantern's rings, has exploded. With its biggest power source now dark, the corpse has never been more vulnerable. Lanterns are surrendered powerless throughout the cosmos. More are injured, and no one knows the cause of the disaster. While John Stewart attempts to lead the Lost Lanterns back home, the next generation of Lanterns, Far Sectors, Joe Mulian, Mulin, and just and Young Justice's Kelly Quintella comb through the rubble of, on Oa to discover who or what took out the battery. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, it also says Green Lantern's Light Extinguish. Uh, written by Jeffrey Thorne, with art by Tom Rainey. This new era of Green Lantern brings together a squad like none before for an epic galactic adventure. Collects Green Lantern, collects <coughs> Future Straight Green Lantern 1 through 2, which I read, and Green Lantern 1 through 4. <coughs> so Green Lantern can usually be a pretty good read. I forgot to read the writer and artist on the other book. Whatever, it don't matter. Um, and let's see. Um, next we have Thor, Volume 3, Revelations. Odin has returned. An heir of tension sits upon uh, sits upon the throne. Father and son, all father and all father, Odin and Thor. Is this relationship forever doomed? And what does it mean for the Ten Realms? Determined to be the best leader he can be, Thor makes this fateful decision to surrender Mjolnir. But what if what if the hammer isn't ready to give up Thor? As all of Asgard reckons with Odin's return in the aftermath of Donald Blake. Uh, Donald Blake's brutal attack, its ruler will be rocked by revelations and face a shocking confrontation with the Avengers. Plus, when the Infinity Stones return, Thor and a surprising guest star must confront a dark, twisted version of the God of Thunder who is determined to become the iron-fisted ruler of all the realms. Collecting Thor 15 through 18 and Thor Annual Number 1 by Donnie Cates, Aaron Cooter, Aaron Cutter, Michael Bandini, Elizabeth Diamaco, Cam Smith, Matthew Wilson, and Chris O'Halloran. <coughs> this could very well be the favorite of next week. Thor's been very good lately. So, yeah, that's it. There really isn't anything super big to talk about. The biggest thing that happened recently is the announcement that there's going to be two new Captain America series, one starring, Cap one starring Steve Will Rogers and another starring Sam Wilson. Other than that, there ain't really shit going on that I can think of. Nothing big anyways. So, I haven't thought of any questions. I've been kind of out of the mood for this lately. I'm not going to lie. Not really feeling it. I'm not really doing anything with it. So, I don't know. Ugh. This feels dumb to just talk to myself about it. And that's really all I'm doing. I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this. We'll see if I'm here next weekend. I don't know. We'll see. Either way, I hope you enjoy your weekend. I hope you enjoy your reading. Have a good one, folks.